Hello everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Hey everybody, Cantonese Cat here. GME. I haven't talked about GME for quite a few weeks. I think big part of the reason why is I want to be kind to the bulls. The more I talk about it, the I feel like I'm almost don't want to jinx it. The, the more I talk about it, I feel like the less likely it's going to pump. They're going to want to pump things when you're the least interested and they've been getting most people very uninterested here over the last few months there's no volume price has gone sideways you had a pump you had a dump everybody got jaded that didn't know you know what market structure could potentially look like they didn't know exactly why they want to be in the stock and those folks they they got they, they're getting jaded i think a lot of tourists have already left i've never visited really gme i think i held like five shares um, just recently I sold them all um, because I when I posted I had like you know a few shares of GME like get all kinds of comments like oh you're a cat oh they're gonna come after you oh you're trying to pump something I mean like I don't, I don't care the whole thing is more for like to me I'm just interested in charts I'm passionate about charting and I think that this is a bullish chart and I'm gonna talk about it so in order to talk about it I just show my show my shares Honestly, right now, looking at the chart, I'm interested in buying it again. I just haven't done it. I, I'm currently on like zero shares. I, I might end up regretting it, but that's okay. I just want to talk about it. And I got some requests talking about GME. So I'm going to do a GME video. Um, despite the fact that I want to be kind to the bulls and don't want to be too bullish and bring this to your attention. But I'm actually kind of surprised how many people are actually in GME. Because my last video a few weeks ago went viral. And I didn't really want to just keep talking about GME just for engagement. But anyway. Got enough requests about it, let's talk about it. Six month chart. Each of these candles represents half a year. Current candle doesn't close until the end of the year by the end of December. You have seven inside candles to this big giant green candle over here. The most likely thing happened after the consolidation of these inside candles, and they're not gonna be staying inside forever. Like at some point they're gonna break up one way or another. Most likely they're gonna end up breaking towards the primary trend. What is the primary trend? Look at the overall history of GME, you just form a higher high over here around January of 2021, and you just form a higher low over here um, around 2024, right? So higher high, higher low compared to this high over here, compared to that low over there, the primary trend is up, right? So the next natural gravitation force for after it's getting done of its consolidation should be up. If anything, this is just basically a back test of this level over here. You have a little bit of a cup here and you basically broke out above the cup and you're doing a back test at this level, right? Th these are, ex these are very, very, um, how should I say that? It's very, very expected when it comes to technical analysis in terms of what it's doing. You look at a monthly chart, you can clearly see that a lot of people have really not been interested anymore. There's no volume here at all, especially for the month of October, which I actually think is, it's a, it's a bullish thing. The only thing I don't like about this candle so far is not a whole lot of wick here. In generally, when you when you're looking for like some reversal, I generally like to see a little bit more wick. The last two months did have these wicks, so I actually thought that October is going to be a pretty good month for GME. It didn't turn out to be. It just end up kind of, you know, coming back down and fill the these uh, wicks over here with a little bit of a candlestick. But because of these wicks on the previous past two months, I think that there's a chance for Q for 2024 to be a pretty good year, if not Q1 of 2025 to be a pretty good year or pretty good month for um, GME. The um, couple of things to look at, first of all, one thing that I generally look at is a 20 month moving average. Whenever things flip from like a negative sloping 20 month moving average, that was resistance. You can see how it was initially was positive sloping, but then it turned into resistance. It broke down underneath of it. It turned into resistance. You had a hard time breaking above, and whenever you have a hard time breaking above a resistance, you plummet, right? That's exactly what it did. Trying to get back close to it, got rejected, <clears throat> went down a lot more. Here, you, you've eventually found an area of vulnerability where it was kind of turning flat here a little bit. That was when GME decided to attack, when Berserker went way outside the upper Bollinger Band here, was unsustainable because there's no expansion of the Bollinger Band yet. You just try and do a little bit of a trend change here. The trend change has happened. This big candle and the candle after that in, in the May and in June have finally stabilized the 20 month moving average from being negative slipping to now flat, right? Guess what happened? You back tested the 20 month moving average once and twice. 
found support. Flipping from resistance here to support, where's the next thing is going to happen? Good things could happen after that. In general, again, none of these things are deterministic, but in general, that should happen. I'm going to see, I'm going to kind of show you, see if I have any examples in terms of why I think this is important. There are a couple of um, very important um, examples here. Look at like how Alibaba did the same thing. Negative sloping, 20 month moving average, fit positive, big things happen, right? And whenever you flip a negative slipping 20 month moving average to positive, big things happen. When you flip a, neg a positive slipping 20 month moving average into negative slipping, broke down, back test, fail, bad things happen, right? These things happen over and over again in a lot of different stocks. Like JD is another example where it flip it from resistance to support, things go a lot higher. Flip it from resistance to support, things go a lot higher, right? There are a lot of these assets that are basically showing you um, that 20 month moving average tend to be a pretty important thing, even for like a cyclical stock like Nvidia. And you guys are like imagining how crazy the run has been. All is, what they really did was flipping a flat 20 month moving average from resistance here to support. Next thing you know, it just kind of ran up a lot higher from resistance here to support. Next thing you know, it ran a lot higher, right? From resistance over here to support. Next thing you know, it ran a lot higher, right? So I think the same thing is happening to GME, except that I'm looking at a monthly chart. So it's going to require a lot of patience to really try to get this to, to play out. It's, uh, it's not a bad thing actually to, to feel frustrated because sometimes you just got to feel frustrated before things go up. Actually that if, if more or less, if you already had a, you know, high here, you back tested a very important zone found support and you're feeling frustrated. That's actually a good thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to, to kind of, to kind of say that. Um, if you're looking at the, um, Supichi monthly cloud over here, you can see that the tank in line, the blue line over here has been serving as resistance, negative slipping for a very long time. The candles back in May and June have flipped this from negative sloping to positive sloping and it's flipped it from resistance to support. Right now you just kind of range bound between these two and you're at the bottom of the range. And generally when you're at the bottom of a range, you know, you're supposed to be more bullish. That's how it's supposed to work, right? The other time frame, if you just look at like the weekly time frame, you can see that there is no volume here at all whatsoever. And price just kind of consoling sideways here for a very, very long time. Broke above the Super Ichi cloud here on the weekly on high volume, back testing it on low volume. And right now we're above of it. The Subichi car is about to turn green pretty soon. I would say give it another like few weeks and maybe potentially it could end up shooting up from here. If you're looking at the Ichimoku cloud, it also had a big volume breakout and a low volume back test. And currently we're getting close to the end of the cloud. There's a chance initially I was hoping it would break above the Tenken. Use has support and bounce up a lot higher. But there's now a chance for it to just kind of break underneath the cloud here and try to work out its technicals and trying to attack the vulnerable spot up here to go up. That's what I'm seeing here with um, with GME. Another thing too, which is not a bad thing necessarily, is that you are a little bit underneath of a flat bull market support band. It had initially flipped it a little bit from like a resistance zone over here to support. And usually when you have something like this happen, generally it's pretty bullish. Now you are a little bit underneath of it right here. Just like you're a little bit over it over here, just like you're a little bit over it over here. I actually think that this area over here is more or less equivalent to what it is over here before a big run than before a big run the opposite way because it's flattening it's consolidating and it's waiting for a big move. The weekly bull in Japan is now starting to squeeze a little bit harder. The daily bull in Japan is squeezing extremely hard right now. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is a big move is going to happen. But looking at the monthly, looking at the weekly, the fact that we're at, you know, decent support 
with the Ichimoku and with the Superichi, it does make me think that I think maybe up. The issue with GME is it does have a little bit of a rolling over look to it. You know, these things generally, if you consider this to be like a little bit of a descending triangle, these things are generally bearish and, you know, you just simply look at the morphology of it, you'd be like, ah, maybe going down. But you also have to take into consideration of GameStop. Each stock has its personality. Every single time it looks like it's about to roll over or roll down, that's when it doesn't, right? That's when it doesn't. So I'm going to give um, GameStop a bit of a doubt here because it's at these very important support and it broke above these, you know, resistance turn to support on high volume. I'm going to give it a bit of a doubt. I think there's going to be some bullish continuation here. If you're also looking at the daily, there's something called like an order block detector. They're buying. There's a, well, there's, there are order blocks underneath over here <clears throat> at, the, at the current price level right here. There's support, right? Why, are, why is there support? Do they not care about this stock? There's no volume. Why is there support? Maybe it's because we're at the bottom of a range and the, the market makers and the whales are buying behind the scene and they're trying to accumulate here so they can sell to you up here around the 40s. Maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know. It's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to go back to the monthly chart here and I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to open up my GAN square. The GAN square was drawn on based on the monthly here is drawn based on numbers 180 and 10. If you do this, you're going to see some really nice market symmetry. I'm even just going to get rid of the Fibonacci level here because it just gets a little bit busy. You're going to see beautiful market symmetry where during the last bull market, it just pushed about four arcs over here. And during the bear market, all it did is it tried to you know, find support here at the angle, at the horizontal, and at the arc, but failed to find support, ultimately broke down. And it just basically went from one arc level to another. The last time it pumped back in May, it went and tried to back test the arc over here, trying to test and try to push for the second time. But the technicals just wasn't favoring it for you to break out quite just yet, right? But now, now you've consolidated sideways enough. Now this move over here has flipped the 20 month moving average from negative sloping to now positive sloping and turning into support. The next area is probably going to end up attacking the arc here again around the 40s. That's where I'm seeing. Now, you're saying, well, it could also gravitate down here to this uh, horizontal line here around 15, and you would not be wrong about it because there's entirely a possibility of where it could go to the bottom of the Tsubishi cloud here on the weekly. There's entirely a possibility where it can go to the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud here on the weekly, right? But does it have to do that? No, because you have a very nice 20 month moving average as support. And currently the, um, the square is drawn from 180 and 10, which I think gives me beautiful market symmetry. But if you change the ratio from 10 to 20, it also gives you a remarkable market symmetry here with the rejection here in the top arc. But right now, you're at a very important horizontal GAN support. You bounced off it almost to the dollar, right? So overall, I do think that you're going to have some bullish continuation when it comes to GME. And if you ask me what the targets are, you're going to try to find these targets based on Fibonacci retracement tool which if you do a linear scale, there's a potential for it to hit like 1.618, 2.618, 3.618 and so forth. All of these are potential. And you're trying to find if there's any confluence between this and also the arc here, trying to figure out the time. I think it's entirely possible for it to hit its previous all time high around 120. It already shows us that it has potential to do that to the 60s, right? And stabilize the trend flip with negative sloping to positive sloping. So I think it's entirely possible for it to attack the previous all time high, which is right around the horizontal line over here and right around the one fit level around 120.75. If it breaks above that, I think the natural part is going to gravitate to the arc up here. Now, I don't know where it's going to be the top arc. I don't know if it's going to be the bottom arc. It's going to find some kind of support somewhere. It could end up very well hitting the 2.618 confluent with around September 2025 at the bottom arc right here or even the confluence zone around the um, angle around the arc and the 2.618 here, which is going to be around July 2025. 
three hundred dollars for GME July two thousand twenty-five. Possible, not deterministic, but possible. If it's able to break above all these things, right? And I wouldn't be like anything too crazy. I don't think it's going to hit like four digits or anything like that. Even three digits, like three hundred is like more than ten x is like fifteen x from here on out, right? Do I think that it has to happen? No. Like I think it could potentially just hit the arc up here, and that could be the end of the cycle. Um, and but but overall, the trend is a higher high here, right, and a higher low here. So I still favor bullish continuation. I just don't know how high it's going to go. But based on the fact that it's consolidating sideways over here for so long on low volume, and based on the fact that you had an initial pump that has set the tone, I do think some of the higher targets could potentially be hit. Anyway, if you're even more bullish, I can change the fit levels from linear scale to log scale. If you want to use your imagination, and again, this is just imagination because technical analysis is not deterministic. If it becomes a crazy euphoric market where a lot of liquidity can come rushing in, you can have an irrationality that comes and GME could potentially end up doing like 25x to the 1.618 fit level here on the log scale, which is confluent with this horizontal line over here. I don't think it's going to happen, but I cannot rule out that possibility. Just like even for the um, linear scale fit levels, I don't think it's going to hit 300, but I cannot rule out the possibility. All I can say right now is that I think the risk reward ratio is good because you're at more support levels than resistance levels. So price is probably end up gravitating up, upwards. But before it does that, you have to reclaim all of these FIP levels. You have to break through an arc. You have to break through horizontal here to get to this arc up here. And that could take a lot of work to kind of get up there. But all I have to say is all it takes is maybe just a little bit of volume to break some of these FIP levels over here to get to the arc up here. So to me, I think the risk reward ratio is good. And I also think that's very interesting that GameStop has gone through a lot of crazy things in October, uh, in August and September, where you have the yen carry trade, end up forming a very nice hammer candle. That tells me, I think, that there's buying pressure behind the scenes, and they want to pump this thing. Anyway, not deterministic. I still don't own a single share of GameStop. That might change, but it's not changing yet. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts, because I think it's important to look at GME to get to use it as an indicator in terms of what could happen for the overall broader market overall afterwards in terms of risk on sentiment in terms of you know how euphoric sentiment kicks in in terms of irrational exuberance you know things like that i am pretty bullish on this chart and i will maintain that way and i'm sorry if you end up listening to this as an engagement because i don't own any shares but anyway Thanks so much for listening. Have a good one. Bye.